We want to check in at the other shooting location. We're understanding now it was not, in fact, a trucking firm, as we had been told earlier. The second location, uh, we understand both of them were agricultural facilities, and Crown Force Teresa Estacio is now at that second location with an update. Teresa, we see an emergency vehicle, it looks like, behind you. Yeah, Pam, uh, you know, according to the website on this address, this is Concord Farms, and the website says that uh, it's been here for 20 years, since 1987, and it is uh, a place where they grow mushrooms and um, pack up mushrooms, but as you mentioned, tonight it is a crime scene. Three people dead behind me on, on a long stretch of road that goes down, and as you can see behind me, there is an emergency vehicle. We have been out here for a while. I have been, and and I've noticed that there are forensic teams that have gone in. Also, the FBI showed up just a short time ago. No one is talking out here because they are inside the facility and they are processing, sadly, the crime scene. And Ken, as you mentioned, this is a very lengthy process. We have a suspect in custody, and now it is very important at this stage to collect all the necessary information and evidence about this very sad scene. A woman approached me just a short time ago asking me if it was true that there were people that were found dead inside here and sadly I had to say yes um, three people have lost their lives um, when this gunman came here and apparently allegedly shot and killed these three people there are so many unanswered questions at this hour so we just hope that we're going to get some more information and more details about this case i can hear another vehicle come up behind me there's been a lot of activity with cars going in and out uh, again it's just a, a lot of forensics and a lot of evidence gathering that is necessary in circumstances like this we're reporting live here in half moon bay i'm teresa stasi Back to you guys. Yeah, Tracy, you just sort of answered my question because even though authorities aren't giving us information beyond what we had earlier tonight in that news conference, which was limited at best, at least being there, you can see who's going in and out, and that kind of gives us an indication of what kind of activity might be going on. So you said a lot of evidence technicians, so, you know, like mobile crime labs and that kind of thing. Is that what's been going on there? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you've been out here before, Ken, you know exactly. Uh, unfortunately, the protocol that takes place and the FBI coming out here because they are now going to be involved in this case as well um, as they unpack all of the crime scene. I have not seen the coroner's vans come in here, but no doubt, um, sadly, that will also be a development in this case and um, to come out here and um, process and then be able to take uh, the bodies of the three people. We don't know if they were men or women. We don't know if they had some kind of relationship with this um, person, the suspect in custody. So again, it's such an early stage and such a large developing news story that uh, we're just kind of out here just trying to give you a sense of how busy this crime scene is and how important they have dedicated so many resources out here to try and gather up all of the evidence, Ken. Um, Teresa, you've mentioned and we've been talking about about how you know this is an agricultural area you're talking about that they grow and pack mushrooms at the site where you are also kind of give a broader sense of what's in the neighborhood where you are are there homes nearby are there this small other businesses nearby as well it's a really busy area. I, you know, I've come out here several times. Uh, I have a, a vest on right now because we are on the freeway, so it's important to be identified. There's not a lot of street lights out here. I, you know, I can hear frogs, uh, frogs chirping. There's so it's it's not well populated out here. There are some lights across the way, but pretty far away as far as any kind of residential area. So it's it's mu more of an agricultural area. It's known um, for that. When I was just reading briefly on the website of Concord Farms. They were talking about how this area is rich in agricultural reasons because of the, the area and the land. And so it's it's mostly dedicated to agriculture. So therefore, that, there's just not a lot of homes or a lot of businesses. And probably about, I would say, 15 minutes, 20 minutes from downtown Half Moon Bay, kind of at that juncture of Highway 1 and 92 to just give you a frame of reference southbound so uh, this area there's some lights down in the distance but it's it's um, not well populated out here 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's an interesting thing to think about, Teresa, that you seem like you're kind of out in the middle of nowhere sometimes, not that far from the, yeah. the urban area of the Bay Area. So the advantage is that we do have world-class forensic facilities here and technicians who really are at the top of their game close by who are now assisting in this investigation at a, a rural location. So there's that, but it's going to be, again, a long night. Teresa Stasio, it's report. also really challenging. You have to remember. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm go sorry. Ahead. We, inter we interrupted you. Yes, it is going to be challenging. Oh. It, it just challenging also you have to remember that Highway 92 has a sinkhole in it and so a lot of the resources are coming from Redwood City and so it's it's difficult to get here right now so that is also going to add some developments and some more additional challenges. Yeah, a long way around. You're right. Thank you. Teresa Stasio live for us uh, just south of Half Moon Bay.